What's up you guys, FSC Fest Jack Speed and Custom Shop. We are at the 2019 Milwaukee Concord de Elegance. I brought my Harley Davidson with me just to show it a little bit, figured why not, right? You know, the entry fee for all these cars goes to charity, so I figured what the heck, we're coming down to film anyway, so we'll put the bike in. But we're not here to focus on my bike, we're here to talk about the other cars. Me and Matthew rode down pretty early in the morning through a whole boatload of fog, actually, and we got done wiping the bike down, got it presentable, ready to go. We walked around to go look for some food, and let me tell you, this place is cars, cars, cars everywhere. There's no way I'm gonna cram all this in one video. We're gonna try to get through them as quick as possible. That way you guys don't get bored of me yapping. With that, let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. I'm standing here with Hank and I'm just gonna let him get right into his car because this car, in my opinion, needs no introduction. It's the Visoc edition of the Porsche 918. It is a hybrid. It has a 4.6 liter, normally aspirated V8 engine. It has two electric motors and a battery system. The combined advertised horsepower by Porsche was 887 horsepower, 944 foot-pounds of torque. Um, I believe they've been dynoed, especially after software upgrades, to be over 900 horsepower and probably higher torque. It's four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering. I've seen information on the internet where people supposedly have done zero to 60 in 2.2 seconds. I think the advertised speed is a little bit higher than that, but not by much. I also saw something on YouTube where it was doing a drag race at a standing quarter mile, did it in 9.44 seconds. Uh, top speed's 221 miles an hour. This car, when it first came out, set the um, lap record at the Nürburgring in Germany. It did it in 6 minutes 57 seconds. That has since been improved upon both by the uh, Lamborghini Huracan Performante that did it 5 seconds faster and then ultimately the Porsche GT2 RS did it another 5 seconds faster, so 10 seconds faster than this car. But this car came out in 2000, well, it was, it was originally introduced in 2014. Mine happens to be a 2015. Um, they made 918 of them worldwide. I think roughly 300 of them came to North America. My color is sapphire blue, and uh, I don't believe there are too many in sapphire blue. And as you can see from the video, it's a, uh, it's, I don't know if you'd call it a target top, but the top comes off in two different sections and it stores in the front located trunk. The engine is mid-engine. Uh, the battery system is underneath the main frame of the car. It's actually a car that uh, comes apart in pieces like a Lego set. It, you, um, in order to, to work on the engine, for example, and you have to have a dealer do this, uh, the whole back assembly where the exhaust is has to be lifted off then the rear bumper comes off, then the rear fenders come off, and that gives access to the engine for the mechanic. It's actually been incredibly reliable. You know, there's been a few campaigns, quote, recalls, where they've identified things they were, Porsche was concerned about, and they had to recall the cars and do some upgrades. But operationally, I only had one time when the car was new where uh, there was a computer system jam where it was it went into what's called limp mode right uh, and that only happened one time and they fixed the software it's never happened again and the car has been a hundred percent reliable um, and it's really an easy car to drive at low speeds as well as high speeds it's very predictable looks like a car that you would um, you know, it would, it would kill you, but it, it really doesn't. Manageable car. Now, you do have to be very sensitive 
to road conditions and the height. It's very low and there are actually some uh, carbon fiber pieces underneath the pan bottom part of the car right. uh, that extend further down than you even can see. So, you know, the clearance is pretty low. And now, is that for to warn you, you you're going to no, the bottom? No, 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 no. They're, they're for downforce. Oh, so, okay. So, you know, if you look at what's happened with all these cars that are coming out, you know, whether it be this car or subsequent Porsches, the GT2 RS and so forth, and the Lamborghini Performante Hur uh, Huracan, and, um, you know, some of these other cars, the way that they're going faster and faster is not only you know due to horsepower and the overall weight of the car, but it's also due to the tire technology, how the tires perform, how sticky they get, and uh, the amount of downforce that they create. Right. And that has become an area that these you know automotive engineers are really getting very very good at, and it's been this whole evolution that has taken place, and that's what's allowing these cars to perform so much better than they used to. I noticed looking at it earlier, it's loaded with a bunch of different fancy aerodynamic features yes. to it, which to a layman like myself, you know, I don't do wind tunnel designs and yeah, stuff well, like that. Yeah, well, neither so do it's I. Definitely but I can, interesting to look sure, at. Sure, sure, sure. And, and, you know, and some of it, you know, I don't know of some of the, uh, you know, the porting that's going on, how much of that is due for cooling, you know, or ventilation uh, for the engine or something. But I know an awful lot of what's going on here is to enhance downforce. Now, this being a hybrid, do you, do you know where they add the electrical power to? Is it on the engine side of the transmission? No, or no, no. After no. The... So there's an electric motor. Okay. I'll use the term motor and engine separately. Okay. Okay, there's an electric motor on the front axle. There's an electric motor on the rear axle. Okay. Okay, and you have a battery system, as I said, which is underneath the car. I believe it weighs about 600 pounds. You can run this car for 12, 13 miles exclusively on electric power if you wanted. Right. You can put it in hybrid mode and as long as you have gas in the tank, you can run the car indefinitely going back and forth. Uh, when I'm cruising along and I'm not really giving it any gas, I'm just, or any power, I'm just steady. It will shift into electric mode, it's stealth quiet. And you can be cruising along on the highway at 70 miles an hour and you're on electric mode. When the battery system gets, when the battery charge gets really, really low, the engine will come on automatically to recharge the batteries. Um, alternatively, if I need to pass a car or I need to change lanes and I hit the gas, right. then the engine will come on in hybrid mode immediately. It has five different modes. It, when you start it up, it defaults into electric mode. Then you put it into hybrid mode where it'll switch back and forth. Then you put it in sport mode where you're just using the gas-powered engine. Then you can put it into race mode where you're using both. And then you can put it into hot lap mode, which is this red button on the steering wheel you push. <laughs> red button. It's kind of like, you know, the eject button or something. Go baby, go. Yeah, go baby, go. And that's hot lap. And that um, gives you maximum um, electrical power for the motors as well as, you know, it does everything you possibly can do to uh, get the maximum out of the engine. You know, it can operate each axle from the electric motors. Okay. Um, and then there has to be some kind of drive shaft linkage that goes through a transmission, a PDK transmission, dual clutch PDK transmission, that enables the engine to drive both the front and rear wheels. Okay. I only know, like I've been to endurance races, I've been to Sebring, I've been to Le Mans, and um, when you see these LMP1 hybrid race cars, you know, mm -hmm. Audi did it for a long time, Porsche did it for a long time, Toyota, Peugeot, they all did these hybrid LMP1 cars. Um, and they, when they would, it would be interesting, when you'd see those cars braking, coming into a turn, you would hear a noise that was very foreign to the what you used to hear from race cars. And this noise was some kind of a, like a, a whirring sound that I was told is regenerating the batteries through either the heat from the braking system or something. But, right. And that's what I was told it was. It was the heat from the braking system that was allowing the batteries to regenerate power. 
But I have had the car four years. I drive it. It's not a garage queen, and um, it's been really a lot of fun to own. And as you can tell from the attention it's grabbed here, I mean, you you get a lot of people that show a lot of interest. Oh, in it, it is the car to see. Yeah. And that blue stands right. Well, out. It's, it, when the sun's out, it pops a little bit. Oh yes. How many miles you got on her now? It's almost six thousand miles, which doesn't mean I drive it a ton. It's four right. years old. But, you know, I, I pick and choose the days and where I'm going and when you park it, you got to make sure that you're parking it in a place that it's it's not going to be, you know, at risk in any way. I noticed the back. Active arrow? Um, you know, it uh, looks like it does go up and does, down, but I it, it does no it does it does uh, articulate. OK, I mean, I can raise it and lower it. I can put it down in sport mode or race mode. A race mode, it kind of comes up on its own. Okay. In hybrid mode, it'll come up, I believe, at 55 or 60 miles an hour. But it will come up, and then it'll change angles. Now, I don't know if it adjusts um, once it's reached this position or not. But I know that to sit flat, it has to rotate a little bit towards the back end of the car. So when it comes up, it tilts forward. What would be your favorite feature of the car? Your absolute favorite part of it or uh -huh. how you, you know, what it does? Um, I mean, you bought it for a reason, so what's the driving force behind buying it? I mean, you obviously enjoy it. I enjoy it a what's lot. The, what's the best part of it, do you think? The perform due to the electric motors, the performance is instantaneous. There's zero lag. And, um, I mean, I had a lady in the car yesterday and she was, uh, she's an avid Porsche fan, but she's an elderly lady. And she was telling me about all the Porsches she owns. And she paid money to raise money for this charity to be my passenger on this tour that we did yesterday. And uh, so unfortunately we had a lead follow that was very slow going to where we went. We couldn't get up much over 40, 45 miles an hour. And coming back, it had rained really, really hard. And these tires, when they're not warm, um, they can be a little, you know, frightening if you jump on it too quick. So I, I cautioned her, I said, gee, I really wanted to give you a, a great ride, but, you know, maybe the conditions aren't allowing it. Well, we found some drive pavement on the way back into Milwaukee, and the traffic was a little bit ahead of us, so I laid back, laid back, laid back. I put it into race mode, and then, without even telling her, I just nailed it. Mm. And in a matter of, like, two, three seconds, we went from 55 or 60 up to 115. And the sound it made and the amount of acceleration you felt instantly. I mean, you know, a lot of cars, they kind of, you know, accelerate and you feel the momentum building. Right. This car, it was like, it went from 60 to 115 in the blink of an eye. And, and that's really exciting. The other thing is on a track, the way this car can come into corners and, and you can really delay having to uh, hit your brakes and you have so much more power coming out of the turns that um, on a technical track, I mean, I know this car was a part of the Holy Trinity, right? The Holy Trinity when this car was introduced was the McLaren P1 and the Ferrari La Ferrari and then the 918. And they did a number of I mean, you know, guys like Chris Harris, Randy Post, they've all done a same driver on a given racetrack, and they've raced all three of those cars, and then you see their recorded lap times. And on the more technical tracks, the 918 has consistently been the fastest of those three cars. On the tracks that have longer straightaways and less technical, actually the P1 proved to be the faster car. Right. But um, and in top speed, the P1 was a, a, a faster car from like 130 on up. It was faster than the 918. But when you look at the more technical tracks, something about the way this car brakes and the way it can accelerate out of the turns, this car really shines. And I know personally from driving it on a track, and I'm no Randy Probst, and I'm you know, certainly not in the league of some of these professional drivers, uh, my best track years are way behind me. But um, it's just fun to drive in that situation, a car that's capable of doing way more than I can take advantage of. Hey, I really appreciate your time. It's you a very know. interesting world once you start talking about these kind of cars. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's, they're amazing to look at and just to, 
you know, like I said, the technical aspects of it, I'm definitely intrigued by it. It's something I know nothing about, and I'm hoping my audience. Well, you just made me realize I don't know much about it either. Well, we'll both be doing research. All right. Absolutely. Thank you very much, okay. sir. Thanks. Awesome. We're gonna go from one end of the extreme to the far other. I'm here with Tim Kelly. He owns um, the 1905 Holzman, also known as a big wheel. It was basically the transition between a horseless carriage, I'm sorry, a horse-drawn carriage, and what became known as a horseless carriage. It has a two-cylinder opposed engine underneath the seat, roughly eight to 10 horsepower. It's got a top speed of about 30. Not that you ever want to go that fast if you're going to be hitting any kind of modern bumps and the like, uh, because it'll jostle you around. The wheels themselves are quite large, as you can tell. It's quite fun, as you can imagine. It's like stepping back into yesteryear, uh, even more so than driving a Model T or a Model A, something with more modern-sized wheels. This is the big wheel. So you, uh, you go out, and it's like stepping back 114 years. Show us how it all works. So you got your coil box, which is converting your 12 volt battery into a much higher uh, charge to run your spark plugs. Uh, so you want to grab a sight of the two cylinder engine underneath the seat. Big old flywheel. It's, yep, it's air cooled. It's got an oil drip, mechanical oil drip system. So That's what these little that's what these channels are for. Okay. And what looks like a thimble is actually a cold start primer. You pour gas in there, open it up, it drips the gas into the cylinder, and assists on cold days with starting the engine. What is its regular fuel? Regular, regular gasoline? Regular or Regular gasoline. The seat actually doubles as a gas tank. So the gas tank is built into the seat itself. Oh, wow. You steer with the tiller. Your throttle. Left and right, up and down. You engage by pulling back. You disengage and brake by pushing forward. And if you needed to go backwards, you push the handle down, pop the button, and you engage the outer spindle. Go ahead and work that again real quick. I want to see how, to, how it works on the belt. So you pull back, and it's tightening your drive belt. You push forward, and it converts into a braking. You see the brake pad against the wheel. Yep. You push the handle down, and now you're engaging. Oh, oh! I see. It goes direct to the outside of the of the wheel itself. Correct. That's what inverts the motion of the engine. I was wondering about that. Way. Okay. Wow. You have a two-speed, high and low. You have your throttle advance or retard right here. Okay. And then you have your starter. Oh, right there. Right here. Now you got to be outside to start it, or can you do it on the inside? Well, I'm sure you could do it somehow on the inside, but I wouldn't want to. I appreciate my hands too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
turning the gas on. Yes, oh, I'm sure she's not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're being a long term relationship with our show today. Next, we'd like to thank President Financial Solutions of Northwest Mutual and our good friends, Jerry and Dave David, for their 10th year of sponsorship to the Milwaukee Congress. We're also very proud of our There we go. I feel bad making a man sweat. No. Should have had me hanging on that thing. She was just in a cranky mood. If she's in a worse mood, she'll give you a heart attack. Awesome. Let's take the camera on the back. That is cool. Yeah. Certainly a process. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That does look fun to roll around in. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Cheers. Have a nice day. All right, brother. Take care.